Hi there, I'm here at Friars Mill. Um, it's about 9.30 in the morning. We're just waiting for one of these two cruisers to get some gas. They've gone off to get some gas from a uh, hardware place. And then we're going to head off. And I'm having to leave the boat today in the marina and go back to, uh, to Bournemouth, unfortunately, and break the journey. But we'll give you this day to north of Leicester and show you what it's like all the way up to um, Mount Sol. Yeah, I'm just going ahead to turn the lock round because uh, two boats just went down in front of us. And we need to get moving. And we pass another large unprotected weir on the left here as we go north through Leicester. Well, this whole site has just been levelled, so I don't know what's going to be put up here. More housing, offices, I don't know. Huge site though, alongside the river. And there's another one of these ornate bridges. This is Saw Lane. Bridge is dated 1879. It's quite narrow coming through here. Passing an old works to our left. Looks like a gravel works or cement works or something. This is very much a site of industrial decay. You can see where Riverside Wharfage and works and industry has been demolished. And uh, there's now just a level area for redevelopment and you have to wonder what's going to go in here it's going to look very different in a, a year or two's time some amazing graffiti here look at that stunning and down there would have been a, a loading dock for some canal side activity industry or something. Absolutely amazing graffiti. Talk about urban jungle. You see, sometimes it is art. And again, graffiti will be gone and different, completely different in uh, a year or two's time. Yeah, now we're coming up to the lock past this pile of rubble and here is the lock. Do not paint on this or any of the surrounding sites. This whole area is off limits. Any other authorised painting in this area causes major problems and breaks our business. Okay. And this is called North Lock number 42, and that's Frog Island. We're gonna pass in a second. Right, we're going under North Bridge, which kind of looks like a tunnel. And uh, to our left is the remains of a tavern. It's uh, got a sign outside of it. It's obviously been closed up a long time. The North Bridge Tavern. Here's a clutch of new ducklings in August. Let's hope we have a nice warm autumn so they can grow and survive. Check out these burned out Ford Capris. Well, one Capri. Is that an old Cortina estate? Here, we've actually got a chimney belching out smoke. Luckily, it's blowing away from us. Look at these in front, what's all that? And once upon a time you would have had boats tying off here to uh, load and unload. We've got a milestone there, Belgrave one and a half miles in the way we're heading and Westbridge one mile away we've come from. You can't help but wonder what that was. And these works, they're not derelict, the lights are still on inside. Again, there are doorways that would have been used for loading boats. 
There's trees growing through the windows there. Long disused, whatever it was. And partly derelict. I'm fascinated by these old buildings. I really am. Canal side industry. What was this? What did they make here? Here's a bit more of the Canal and River Trust's uh, living canal bank, which uh, stops people from tying off because it's so overgrown. So you can't moor up where the living bank is, where the reeds are. And it's all thorns here, it's all um, brambles. Very large winding hole here as we approach the lock and some CRT barges. And there's a little arm to the right there with some moorings on it. Well that was Lime Kiln Lock which had broken paddle gear. Another one with broken paddle gear. There's all sorts of little arms and branches that go off here. Um, but the big one that we come up to is a, a weir called the Swan's Nest Weir, which is next to the uh, Leicester Space Centre, the National Space Centre. In the meantime, we're coming past some more industrial buildings that have been, uh, one's been restored. This one here looks like it's been turned into flats or something. I'd say the upper floors and those, the first uh, top four floors are all flats. These look more like offices down below. But in front of us is an industrial building that's uh, seen better days let's say huh. just the uh, facade against the canal that's left and the chimney up there which is now being used as a mobile phone mast and now you can see there's a lot of rubbish in the in the river and here is a volunteer litter picking team which is nice to see So here we've got some modern canal side uh, flats with the old Woolsey chimney behind them. Right then in the distance under that little bridge is the next lock and that is the Belgrave lock. And we've actually caught up with the two boats in front of us which is a bit of a pain to be honest. So the arm to the left leads down to this weir complete with herons, ducks, geese, etc. And the National Space Centre somewhere behind there. And if you look at this, we've got a whole load of kiddies going in the lock in their kayaks. <laughs> Hundreds of them. Just look at all of these. Now some people here have got the right idea and they're carrying their boats through, which makes a lot of sense. It's got to be quicker than locking through. Finally got into the lock and there's another lot of canoeists and instead of portaging their canoes up, which would make sense, they're waiting for the lock. So uh, fair play to them if they want to go through the lock. Well these two lads here are desperate to be on YouTube. So I'm going to put them on YouTube. They said they're allowed on social media. I don't know whether that's true or not, but you know, what harm can it do? Guys! Hi. Well, there's the National Space Centre and we finally got clear of all these kids in their canoes. My God, there were loads of them. The next lock is Burstall, which is a good mm, mile and a half away. So a good uh, 20 minutes cruising. So I'm going to crack on and get there as quick as I can and hopefully turn it round ready for these guys to come through with me. And this is the Sea Cadets, which is great that they've got somewhere in the middle of a town like this to um, do their activities. Always good for children to have activities to do in towns, keeps them out of trouble. That's never a good sight to see. But actually, I have to say, given uh, I went through London two years ago 
and the amount of plastic in the canals there was absolutely terrible. Here, there's, um, there's a lot less plastic and it would seem that the plastic bags ban, or the charging for plastic bags, has put a stop to thousands of plastic bags. I mean, there's one there, as I say that. But there's far less than there used to be, far, far less plastic bags in the rivers and canals, which is great. So we're just at Belgrave now. There's no hint of a towpath as, as such right next to the river. In fact, the towpath is shown as being on the right hand side here, but uh, I can't see any evidence of that. So we're coming up to a very old looking bridge here over the river. Okay, it's bridge 12, which is Thurkeston Old Bridge. Just had a little uh, near hit with a fisherman, but there's the old bridge behind us, look at that. Well, the map book shows a marina between Thurkeston Old Bridge uh, and the next one up, which is uh, Loughborough Road Bridge here. And that was, over there, the marina, but it is no more. Um, there's an entrance, but there's no, no sign of any boats there or anything like that. So here we go under the Loughborough Road Bridge. And this will be where all those kiddies came from earlier. That's great that they've got something for the children to do. Keep them busy and uh, out of trouble. Excellent. Suddenly the river opens up here. Um, we've just gone through the Loughborough Road Bridge and past the uh, Leicester Outdoor Pursuit Centre. And yes, so it's opened out into what looks like sort of industrial on the right and a bit of rural, well, wilderness really, this is. Look at that, you can see where the bank is, where that railing is, and all this stuff's grown out from the bank. Between um, the Loughborough Road Bridge and the Watermead Bridge, heading north, the river is quite, uh, it's quite deep, and we're making good progress. The boat's going along very well. But do beware, the edges are quite weedy and shallow. You can see, I don't know if you can see the weed there, coming out from the bank. Both sides, it uh, encroaches. This vast patch of hogweeds just taken over there on the bank. So we're coming around uh, some very meandery sections of the river here and approaching the next lock, I think very soon. Oh, I just hit something with a propeller there. And my friends on the river cruisers in the distance are catching me up. You can just about see them coming around the corner there. There they are. So I'm assuming that by that uh, piling section there in the distance, the railings, that's where the next lock is going to be. And that will be a Burstall lock. Again, it's not much of a drop, it's three foot four, it says. So there's the canoe portage and a bridge across the weir. And then we'll arrive at the lock in just a second. And Mr. Heron's thinking about taking flight. Go on, go on. There he goes. Well, we've just come through the uh, Burstall lock, which was not very much of a drop, but very slow due to a pair of boats in front of us who have now tied off and uh, stopped. So we continue on. Um, there's kind of water meadows to our right and then a big country park on the left after we go around some meanders in the river. And then there's another lock at, uh, at Thermiston. Well, Leicester Marina are obviously very keen to have your business because they've had signs out every hundred yards for the last half a mile saying Leicester Marina 700 yards, Leicester Marina 600 yards, all the way down to here where we are to the junction that takes you down to Leicester Marina. But we're not going in I'm afraid, sorry. And that takes you into the marina, which is quite a long way down that channel. Boats or marina, but uh, it's obviously there somewhere in the distance. So, just past Les Marina, there's this little weir and some moorings in front of you, and you're coming into the lock lay by. And some people look like they're magnet fishing here. Yeah. 
no panic and it's you know it's people standing there and helping you and then eventually you sort of you, you get it you get the technique uh yeah that's where the fun begins got a proper audience now yeah. youtube <laughs> don't mess it up <laughs> This is like a portrait kit, like. Ah, easy enough. Right, shall I try and roll it? Not very scared. Don't laugh if we get it wrong, will you? <laughs> <laughs> try not. We will. Are you? Oh, I can't roll. He can't roll. I can't roll. Ready? Oh my god. Crazy. Mate, that look easy. <laughs> I'll do that again. Can you do it quick? It's one way of cooling off. Quick? That was quick. Let's have a look quick for you. Ready? Is that quick enough? Yeah. Well, I can't any quicker than that. <laughs> you got to think, it's got a push of water, isn't well it? Well done. Thank you. Push off. That's experience and practice, that is. And practice, yeah. yeah. Not panicking. You had yeah, about another five turn. seconds to get to me, though. Only downside, all the water goes straight <laughs> So this is MGM boats. And they've got a spray cabin here. Wet dock. Have they got a dry dock? Well, they've got a slip. So they've got boat repair facilities here, that's quite nice. And um, diesel and what have you. So this is all just north of Thermiston Lock. And we're cracking on now, we've got three more to do before I stop for the day. There's a view behind us as we go past MGM boat to Thermiston. There's the scouts and guides. Again, nice for them to have a water side, but shame they haven't got any boats to go with it. All along this section, um, we're sort of around weekend. Um, it's quite rural and uh, the river's very empty. I've only seen one boat coming the other way so far. So there's the old moored up boat, but not much going on here. It's quiet for traffic. And uh, you've got this big steel piling on the edges here, and it's pretty quiet. Well, we're just passing the Hope and Anchor pub behind us now and uh, that was bridge 18 and now there's a big bridge in front of us. So this is the A46 we're passing under here. Bridge 19 and now we're kind of out of Leicester really. Um, As you can see, there are two boats all the way over there and a heron, look, right in front of us. Not bothered heron. Do I look bothered? Let's pass through bridge number 20, Hills Bridge. There's a boat yard on the left here. Um, they sell colour and what have you. And they've got a cafe and a little chandlery. Being me, I'm obsessed with sea otters. There's a nice little cream of blue one called Largo. Oh, they've got a slipway here as well in the marina and there's a nice little centre cockpit as you approach junction lock you can see there's a very strong weir on the left and there's the lock in the distance 
We're just north of Junction Lock and beware, the river slopes in very shallow on the left and there's a lot of, well today, there's a lot of bits of wood floating down the river as well. So you've got to be careful not to get them around your prop. Quite large chunks of, of logs and stuff. But it's very shallow over on the left hand side. That looks like a section of Bailey Bridge in the field next to us there. I'm pretty sure that is a section of Bailey Bridge. So, you can definitely tell you're on the river here. It meanders all over the place. Um, never stays constantly in one direction. But the scenery either side is very nice. Very rural. We are north of Leicester now, outside of the town, and it's very beautiful here. So we're already arriving at Costington Lock. Just past some moorings on the left, and that's taken me a bit by surprise how quickly we've got here. There are very few other boats moving on this section. If you want a quiet cruise, come up through Leicester. Not much traffic at all. Just the odd other boat. But all the people we've met have been very friendly. Friendly fishermen up here too. Always uh, happy to say hello. And not as miserable as I've met some down south. So this is the Cossington lock, my second last lock of this section of the trip. Down we go. So we've just come through Cossington Lock, which you can see in the distance behind us, and that's the old mill at Cossington. So those are the nice little moorings at Cossington for people who live on them, not for leisure craft like ours. And there's the bridge and the old mill in the distance now. Here the river has a gently purposeful flow to it, and there are a few more residential long-term moorings. Well, as soon as you get a bit of deep water underneath you, you really can crack on. It won't be too long before the sile be lock, and that's where I'm stopping for the day. This section of the River Saw is very remote, nowhere to tie up, very beautiful as well. I guess you could tie up to a tree or something if you had to, but there's literally nowhere to stop here at all. Um, you can tell you're on a river, that's for sure. This is no canal. It's far too wide. Uh, it's very deep. Plenty deep enough to let the boat move along really nicely. Um, and uh, yeah, it's very pretty here. It could be any river anywhere, but this is, uh, this is just north of Leicester on the River Saw. The only problem is there's no towpath here at all. So you have to go into the villages to get from uh, one place to another. I'm not gonna be able to cycle back straight down the straight down the towpath because there isn't one and over there you can see a church in the distance so as you go through the pipe bridge keep left for the lock and just behind the lock is the uh sileby marina sileby mill boat yard so that's the old sileby mill and there's the weir next to the lock and here's my friends from the coventry canal club coming out and I was told to tie off on the, there's Sileby Mill Boatyard, I was told to tie off on the diesel pontoon here. So that is what I am going to do. Well, as you can probably see, I've gone back and got the van. Um, I'm at Sileby Mill Boatyard, which is a really nice little boatyard on the River Saw, just north of Leicester. And uh, we had a lot of rain in the night, a lot of rain in the night. So everywhere you look, there's puddles on the ground, boats are wet, a few drips coming through, not the end of the world. And the weir here is running. The River Saw gets very, very lively with just a bit of rain, so the uh, boatyard owner told me. So there's my little boat at the end with the canopy, not in the shed but the one nearest uh, the shed, all safely tucked away and I hope you can hear me. I'm going to go and have a look at the weir before I go. 
This is the old mill stream. So that's the other side of the mill stream and it's even got a little bit of a, a rip down here. A little bit of uh, shallows and rabbit. You can see the piling under the water there that's been used to raise this. And that's the actual weir. That's quite spectacular. A lot of water going through there. It's a lot more lively than it was yesterday. Look at those little whirlpools and the eddies as that goes through. we come back to the, lock, the last lock that we came through. And there's the last lock we came through yesterday. Now I don't know if you can see the uh, marker there. The red section's danger. The orange is, be careful, it's getting quite lively. And underneath it there's a green section. And yesterday it was on the green. The water's come up quite a lot since yesterday and the guy at the marina said um, that the river gets lively very quickly and you know a little bit of rain can make a big difference. Anyway I'm gonna head off now. You can see the village of Sileby over there with the church. It's very pretty actually it's well worth a look if you're stopping here for any length of time. We'll just walk back across the weir. beautiful old mill building. There's some industry along there, uh, metal workers and various bits and pieces. And I'll just show you the mill wheel pit because that's still here. So there's the mill wheel pit. It no longer has a stream flowing through it. That's been blocked off. But uh, nice that they've still got the pit.